Hey girl, it's Miss Tony, and you're joining me on week 35 of my pregnancy journey. Thanks so much for joining me. So this week, the baby is the size of a spaghetti squash. <laughs> Last week or two weeks ago, um, it was a butternut squash. And this week, it's a spaghetti squash. I don't even eat squash, so I don't know what that looks like. But I can tell you that's about 17 and a half inches long and about five pounds. So babies certainly getting big now <laughs> definitely i can feel it because in the middle of the night i am getting up to pee at least three times a night and i didn't have to experience that at all during the rest of the pregnancy so baby's getting heavy baby sitting on my ladder and so i know the baby is growing and growing well so I mentioned my bladder. Um, so uh, quite a few videos ago, I told you guys that the baby was laying transverse, which is just sideways. And I could feel it because I could feel the head here. I could feel the toes over here. But worst of all, I had a muscle spasm that lasted for a couple days. Well, I got another one, y'all. And this one lasted for like four nights and five days. And whoo, chow. It was a struggle and this time the baby wasn't even transverse the baby still felt head down which my last two appointments the, or both of my doctors have confirmed that the baby's head down so i know what that low head feels like now on my bladder again and of course i get the little tingles up here with the feet and with the toes and so the baby was slightly like the head was slightly over here if you guys saw my video last week about my amazing sonogram um the baby's head was all the way low but to the right and if that was a position this week, then that makes total sense because that's exactly where my muscle spasm was, which happened to be the same place where it was last time. Um, this time, y'all, I tried my little exercises that I showed you guys that I found online that worked last time, my side laying position and all that. Nothing worked this time. And you guys know I'm a bit skeptical of taking any medicine when I'm pregnant. I never remember which one I could take anyway during pregnancy, if it's Tylenol or if it's Motrin. So I just didn't even bother because I'm just nervous about taking it um, first trimester or third trimester. And I just don't do it in the second trimester either. So I just had to bear the pain for five days and four nights where I could not sleep. And the pain, the muscle spasm was on my right side, but I couldn't sleep on that side. So I had to like alleviate the pain by sleeping on my left side. And when I slept on my left side, it didn't hurt at all. Actually, it took the, the pain away um, if I was sitting or standing or laying down normal, flat, you know, or on the right side, then I was definitely in nonstop pain. But if I was lying on my left side, then I didn't feel anything at all. So I tried to sleep that way and I realized I just toss and turn a lot during the night, especially while pregnant. And so I would get a couple good hours on my left side, but then at some point in the night I would wake up because I would be in excruciating pain and I realized I flipped over <laughs> to my right side. So I couldn't get any relief for four nights. I couldn't get any rest. I would get a couple hours here and there, but anytime I would subconsciously just move, um, I would have that pain back. So it went away on its own. Actually, Kelvin, <laughs> one morning, um, he saw me struggling. He was getting ready for work and he's like, you still? And I'm like, yeah. And so he came and talked to the baby and told the baby to be peace, be still. And that day is when the pain went away. I kid y'all not. And so these kids be listening to daddy in the womb. Now, when they come out, it's a whole different story. <laughs> but when they on the inside, that voice be having them shook. So he told the baby to be still and the baby did get still. And that pain went away after five long days. And I now feel great again, uh, my usual normal self. So speaking of how mama's doing, I actually started prenatal yoga again. So with both pregnancies, during my third trimester, I did prenatal yoga and I would go a couple times a week and um, it's really refreshing. It's really good to get good stretches. Um, I'm not in there praying to Buddha or nothing, but I love going for the effect on my body. 
Um, some of the poses are really, really good at getting your body to stretch, like your hips to turn out and to get your, um, even a little bit of stretch in your belly. You're not supposed to stretch too much when you're pregnant, um, like a back bend or anything, but just getting a little bit of stretch on both sides and having those really deep breathing exercises, even those are really helpful just to get your body in sync, um, to get you calm and peaceful. And um, like I said, the best part is really just getting those good stretches in and just different twists and turns, ways you, you typically wouldn't on your own. So I would highly recommend prenatal yoga if you haven't done it before, even if you've never done yoga before at all. You can be completely new to yoga and still just join a prenatal yoga class and fit right in. Um, I have a class because of COVID. We're coming out of COVID, y'all, finally in California. Um, so the classes I go to are actually in a park, um, not in their studio. And I actually prefer it that way. <laughs> and so I love it because you're lying on your back, you're on your mat, you're staring up in the sky. Ca you know, California weather is always beautiful and perfect. You got birds chirping overhead. I mean, it is the perfect setting for yoga just to get your body and mind at peace and it helps prep your body for labor. Some of the positions um, really work to open up your hips, um, even squats and leg stretches, lunges, all those wonderful things that your body needs um, that you may not be getting in your regular exercise routine right now, you can get those in prenatal yoga. So actually when you're pregnant, your body is a little bit looser than normal because of all of the hormones and because of the loosening up of your joints and preparation for your body to give birth. So even if you're usually really tight and you can't do a split or you know you can barely touch your toes, it doesn't matter. You can really get a good nice stretch and do some really good poses in a prenatal yoga class. And even if you can't find prenatal, so typically when I was pregnant with the girls, I went to an actual prenatal yoga class with other mamas. And that's really fun because you have this whole supportive community. Everyone's at different time spans in their pregnancies, um, but it's nice to be able to see them a couple times a week and connect with other moms. So that's super fun. But again, I mentioned because of the pandemic, the studio that I had been going to with the last two babies actually doesn't have a standalone yoga class for prenatal moms right now so i joined a mixed class and instructors are really good at um helping you alternate different positions if you can't do certain poses due to your belly being in a way or if you just can't stretch a certain way so highly highly recommend it you guys also know i am a proponent of prenatal massages so i've increased my frequency of those as well <laughs> So now I'm going every week, just like I'm doing my prenatal yoga every week. Um, now that everything is reopened and I'm able to schedule those appointments accordingly, I am taking full advantage. So <laughs> I'm catching up on my massages and my guy came back, y'all. Gustavo came back. So he was the guy that used to do my prenatal massages with my last two kids and he ended up going back to Florida with his family during COVID because Massage Envy shut down. So he recently came back and I couldn't have been more excited. And I had him do my last couple ones and he is amazing. I complained a couple videos ago about some of the prenatal massages because oftentimes because you're laying sideways, you have a pillow between your leg, um, they don't have the ability to put as much pressure on your shoulders as you may need. I for sure need. It's the reason I'm coming week after week. But um, with Gustavo, he's really good at still giving me that pressure that I need in my, especially in my upper uh, neck and shoulder area while taking heed that I'm pregnant and I can't lay on my stomach. And um, he gives me pillow stacks so that I can have some leverage and it's just the perfect setup. So. I would highly recommend that too if you're not doing prenatal massages at least once. I mean, try it one time while you're pregnant, your body will thank you. <laughs> so I made a decision about my registry. I told you guys before, I wasn't gonna do one. Um, you know, everyone has different philosophies on whether you should have another baby shower, or whether you should have another registry after your first kid. And I really think it's a personal preference. I do see how it can be a little, Proceed as a little bit greedy if you're having multiple kids and you're having showers for every one of your kids. Um, but at the same time, there are things that you're going to need 
for that following kid and you don't need all the stuff that you got at the first shower you definitely don't need all that especially if you have your kids close together like I did you guys see I still got my bassinet in my room it's been in my room since Kennedy was born four years ago <laughs> it just never I never took it out because after her then Cameron was born and we ended up putting her in her nursery a little bit later than we did with Kennedy because we had family that was staying with us helping care for the baby so I ended up just leaving her in the bassinet a little bit longer um and closer to it six or seven months and then she went to her own nursery that we were able to design for her so then I kept it in just because we started using it for storage <laughs> and so that's the only reason why but then when we got pregnant we were like well no use of putting it out now we, we're gonna need it again so I put things on my private registry including stuff like bedding for the bassinet new bedding new sheets um I have a rocker uh in my room as well that I've had since Kennedy <laughs> and it's almost like a decoration because it matches my room the, and the kids actually play in it like it's a toy currently so I have to get new cushioning for the swing and a new cover so we can uh be able to use that for the new baby so those are the types of things that I've added to the registry nothing major Yes, we're going to have to get a new stroller. Yes, we're going to have to get new car seats. And then eventually we're going to have to uh, figure out what we're doing with the new baby's nursery. And we'll need furniture for that. But those are all things that we'll be providing for the baby ourselves as well as our parents. That's not something that we're going to put on our registry. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do it. My coworkers were putting pressure on me because they wanted to be able to provide something. And I kept telling everybody at work, like, you guys could just give diapers if you're going to give anything at all. Newborn diapers, size one diapers, even some size twos I'll take. Um, and I'm a Huggies girl. I tried Pampers. I tried Kirkland's. I tried Honest um, with Kennedy and with Cameron and I just prefer Huggies hands down. So I have tons of diapers on the registry. And that's what I did with our second when we had our gender reveal. We told people in the invitation like we, we don't expect gifts. We really just want your presence. Um, but if you must, <laughs> if you must give us something, we'll take a gift card um, to like Bed Bath and Beyond or Bye Bye Baby or Target. Um, or if you want to actually bring a gift then diapers are, are welcome. And so my in-laws ended up shipping diapers to us because people did take us up on that offer. People oftentimes don't want to just walk in with a card and a gift card, even though that's appreciated. A lot of times people want to actually walk in with a gift. And so, um, I just did an Amazon registry. I made it private. I'm just making the link available to people who are close to us in our family or coworkers at my job or my or Kelvin's job just so if people really do want to for instance at my job they're probably gonna pitch in I think they're gonna pitch in um, all together and do one nice gift so uh, they didn't want to do diapers which is totally fine and again very much appreciated so um, that is the reason that we're doing a small registry and why we're gonna make it private it's just like I said a personal preference lastly I actually ordered my pump y'all so thank you all so much for the recommendations for breast pumps I got a lot of people who hit me up on Instagram or who emailed me ideas uh, reasons why they picked the pump that they did or actually reasons why they wouldn't recommend the pump that they got so I really really appreciate all that great feedback I'm excited to get it it's actually going to come in the mail the process was pretty easy so I went through my insurance online and they have like eight or nine different distributors that you can choose from. So with my previous pregnancy, I used Medline. Before that, I used a company called Byram Healthcare. This time I went with One Natural and was able to submit everything online really quickly, really easily. They reached out to my doctor to get a prescription. My doctor was able to turn that around same day. And so then I got an email confirmation from the company saying, we received your order and your prescription i did have to pay the difference so i did do an upgrade uh, most of the pumps are covered at 100 percent, but there are a few that are sort of upgraded models because they're either brand new on the market they're high end hospital grade um i told y'all i needed all that <laughs> i need all that double pump all that so um i did do the upgrade i paid the difference and then got the confirmation and then, and then i got an email today that it's shipped and it'll be here within the next few days so the whole process took less than a week 
Um, so it's a good time when you're at the end of your pregnancy to go ahead and order your pump. If you've made the tough decision of which one to get, there are so many options out there. And then there were some that were offered on other distributor lists that my insurance company provided that weren't on other lists. So I mentioned they had like nine different options. I didn't go through every single one because I kind of had an idea of what I wanted, but there was one pump that I didn't even know was on the market yet because it's brand new. And that's the one I ended up selecting and it wasn't on some of my distributors lists. So we got to research really well um, if you know what you want because pumps aren't cheap, but oftentimes some women do get the free one three insurance and then get an additional one just for travel or for their jobs as well. So um, I'll probably give some feedback once I actually start using the pump. Um, I will reveal which pump I received and how I like it. Well, that my dear is the end of my week 35 updates for you. Before you go, I have to show my baby bump as usual. It is nice and round today. <laughs> I didn't realize it was poking out a little bit today. Tell y'all, this baby is on the way. Now looking at this belly, what do you think? Boy or girl? Some people are saying, well, you're still kind of high. And then others, there are some days when I do have this little pointiness and then other days when the baby's back a little bit further and it's just normal roundness. But the baby's not low yet, so that's a good sign. This, this once I start rubbing the belly down here, that's when baby is really coming. So tell me in the comments, do you think it's a boy or a girl? Just by the way I'm carrying. Let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.